It's one thing we found from doing a lot of wedding venues uh, and talking to venue operators and just observing from attending lots of weddings is that you need to keep a party together. And so dining, drinks and dancing and speeches all need to be kept quite closely together so that at the end of dinner you don't then suddenly have half the party going one way and half going the other and and then an hour later everyone's just gone home because it's felt dead actually you need you need to be able to sit and finish the bottle of wine on the table while watching people dance and then queuing up at the bar and bumping into other people and so just you keep it social very social and quite tight in that respect which is also great because you don't want to build a bigger building than you need to you don't want to have you you you, you want spaces to really work hard for their money <laughs> Um, because otherwise you end up saying, oh, well, we'll have drinks over here and we'll eat there and we'll dance there. And then you've got a building that's three times as big as it needs to be, three times as expensive and doesn't work as well. At Elmore, you don't see the, you don't see the dance floor when you're eating. So you, 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 come in, you come into the Gilly Flower and you see all the tables laid up and you sit and dine and there's this huge set of curtains. And then, and then at the end of dinner, there's this, suddenly there's this big reveal, the curtains open and there's this sort of dance floor, which is pretty cool. The lights are great, the sound's great, there's a stage and you have bands and DJs and things and suddenly you're like, wow, I didn't expect that to be there at all. Um, and then the party just evolves through the evening like that. So the building, it was conceptually like a soundproof marquee. So, so we had these huge thick walls but then we needed it to have a lightness. Uh, so we, 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 we built a clerestory to get light in through the top. And then these big, huge, great plate glass windows, which are rather like the sort of huge sash windows in a Georgian ballroom. So, so it's also a little bit like a stately ballroom and a marquee and this kind of earth soundproof bunker. And it, it kind of encapsulates all of those different sort of feels. Very early on, uh, the the sound thing became really important. So because he, he had run big dance music festivals and had, had parties at Elmore too, and it's a very quiet rural location, keeping the sound in was gonna be one of the central driving design issues. Uh, and, and so we had a, an acoustician was, was appointed very early in the project. And I remember asking him, you know, what, what's going to work here? And he said, basically, you need thick, heavy walls. And he showed us some details of sort of concrete block constructions that had been used and were, were quite kind of standard um, acoustic details. And I remember just thinking, this isn't, this isn't the right thing here. It's completely wrong in the context of the old building, but it's also kind of lots of carbon and, uh, and that sort of thing. So we came up with this idea of using rammed earth um, which, uh, so the, the walls are two foot thick. You need to have good facility for catering in a, at a wedding venue. Well, if you're going to do a lot of weddings, you know, you need, you need to have that. And it needs to be right next to where the weddings are happening, but not where all the guests are then going out to sit at the fire pits or chat and, you know, later on in the evening. So getting that arrangement of things is, is, yeah, you, you've really got to crack that, think about it really hard. So, so those kitchens are then serving breakfasts in for the wedding party that are staying in the house. It's amazing how that wedding business, the Gilly Flower, and the energy that's gone into that has brought the whole house to life. It's probably in the best state it's ever been in. Um, it's really alive, it's well used. Um, and the fabric of the building is much kind of healthier and better as a result. So it's an interesting case from a sort of planning and conservation perspective that finding a use like that for an old building like that really looks after its heritage status and keep, keeps, keeps, keeps it in good use. You just, you have to have really good, well-functioning loos that are actually nice places to go. And so you do have to put in a good bit of thought in those. They don't have to be particularly expensive or that sort of thing, but you just need to put in really good thought so that so that they don't, everyone always remembers going to the door. I remember someone saying, oh, you can judge a restaurant by the quality of its loose. And actually, I sort of think that's 
it's quite true. You remember what it's like. So, so those have to be really good. You also just have to have be mindful of spaces where people will want to go in the evening, you know, break out, step outside, a few people who smoke or whatever, who want to go out and have a chat, just a small group, so having fire pits and things outside, having some outside covered space is really good. I mean, I suppose from a design perspective, we wanted to create this great big soundproof marquee building out of the back of the stately home, but then for it almost not to be there. And, and so there was this deep hedge, very rough, scrubby hedge. We effectively just built the building in that hedge and then kept the, build, kept the hedge running across the front of the building. Part of that's a visual thing, so that when you're looking from the landscape, you just see the hedge with these windows cut into it. So it's a little bit kind of mysterious like that. Part of it's from a really practical thing is that round earth walls, you need to keep the rain off them. So you have a big overhanging roof, but then if you get a driving rain, having plants a metre away from that wall on a, on a planted mesh screen is brilliant because it just takes all the rain, it drips down, the walls then are completely protected. So, um, and then it's quite nice as well because there's lots of bees and birds and things nesting in it. To have something that's really successful, and we, we were we did get an RIBA award for it, which was really you know it's just a bit of icing on the cake, but just the fact that it's been such a successful space uh, to run a business from, and people have so enjoyed having so many weddings there, is is uh, yeah it's really gratifying as a, as an architect.